Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Commodities Update video. And today we'll be doing technical analysis on natural gas, UNG, oil, US dollar, gold, and silver. We'll be looking at support and reason levels as well as a couple of targets where most likely scenario price will be heading into later this week. And if you guys learn anything, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. As well as there is a free 15 minute call below. And check out the Patreon page. There is um, technical analysis if you guys want to get your stock looked at or any kind of mentorship. All right, let's take a look at natural gas on the five minute time frame. So today we had a little bit of a dip in the pre-market. So, and bulls pretty much just bought it all back up, which is a good sign. And we ended up closing just slightly above yesterday's high. And we're pretty much just testing it right now as support. So ideally we hold above yesterday's high and bounce from here. But even if we come down slightly below, it's okay. Uh, as long as we don't come all the way breaking the sideways range, then it'll be a little bit of a rough like after such a bounce. And we go to the larger turn time frame. So let's go to the hourly. So on last Thursday, uh, I talked about where this was a bear break out of this falling wedge, lacking any kind of follow through and we reversed. And I said that we need to break above the resistance of this falling wedge, which is this one, resistance, resistance, resistance. Is that where we rejected from Thursday as well? Exactly that spot. And we broke above it on Monday. So that's a good sign. And I added a position here. I talked about where I had a initial position over here after this bear break. And then we kind of came back into this falling wedge support zone. I added my initial position here. And I'm just took a little bit of profit over here today, but I'm still holding some positions to potentially look for this 1.93 level. See if we get there. If not, I'll just stop out with a profit. And right now, I'm sitting pretty decent. After an ad from here, some profit. Yeah, not decent. And so yeah, so let's see if uh, if we do break above today's high, which is clear resistance up here. Obviously, 1.88. We tried it for like three times. See on the five minute time frame. Once, twice, three times, and we couldn't get over it. Not that big of a deal for me at this moment, unless we retrace too much right now it's looking more like an hourly bull flag at this moment let's see we're just on it if we don't break below 1.84 one is still an hourly bull flag but these hourly bull flags do not mean that much to me because you can see we had one yesterday too and here here we had one right here just flagging and then next thing you know we broke through that so and then we v shape these flags don't mean that much um it just in near term, you can see it as it's forming. Use it just as a short term guide. The bigger picture for me is uh, the daily time frame. As long as we hold above the daily EMA 12, which is a tail looking line at 1.835, that's a good sign because we reject it from there once. So you count one, two, three times, four, five, six, seven, and close to this eight. Yesterday was, I would say, nine ish, but we closed right on it yesterday. And today we close above it, so that's a good sign. But we don't want to see after us breaking a resistance finally uh, and closing above it and just come back below it and close below it. If we close below it, that's a red flag for me. Um, but at the moment we did come down, but we ended up closing above it. So that's a good sign. And if we do break above today's high, I'm looking closer to 1.933. This is zone, 1.9 zone, because of this quadruple top right there um, from March 14th all the way to 20th. And uh, it's also a resistance from this one, this diagonal resistance, which coincides with that 1.9 zone, which is this zone right there. So it depends how we come up to that. So let's say we, you know, get there tomorrow or Thursday and straight shot up 4%, then it's probably a good place to take some profit and add on the pullback. But if we just straight up blow through it, then we have a good chance to $2. But we'll see how it tests. When do we, when we come up to here, you know, if we come up to there and it's like something like this, or, or that we touch it at right there, <laughs> we're just kind of flush. We'll see it will be something bigger than this, but it will just flush down and get a weak bounce 
and then we get a five minute downtrend, then that's definitely a clear rejection. Or something like, you know, like a triple top where we kind of just try it and then can't get over it, hit again, can't get over it, and then rolled over. That's then yeah, then it's a good sign to take some profit there and wait for a little bit of pullback, then add it and then see if we, you know, come back down, bounce around, and then try to break that again. But we'll have to see how it trades once we come out here. I think we still need to break this 1.88 zone before we even talk about this above us. And for bears, you want to definitely break below this hourly M12, negate that hourly bull flag, and break below this daily M12 at 1.85 and close below it. And we may just start to shape up like uh, potentially a little bit of a retracement from this move. It was quite a bit. Already, yeah, 11% move. So a little bit of a pullback is not that big of a deal. But we already kind of did that today. So that's like the red flag for bears where we did pull back quite a bit from yesterday. And we close above game 12. So that's the good sign. Um, another thing I'm watching is potentially a inverse head and shoulders. If we come up to this 1.93 zone and then we pull back and it forms a and we're setting shoulders like that. So that's why this 1.93 zone is very key. If we do that, then obviously we'll be adding on the way up of this side. And actually head higher. But we'll see how it trades. Yeah. And if it's head and shoulder, it's just a downtrend into an uptrend. Just the bit of that pattern. Just downtrend into a uptrend that if it ends up confirming. All right, let's take a look at UNV. So similar, it pretty much trades with net gas and yeah, we need to break this one point, sorry, 15.7 zone pretty much is this zone right there. Same thing as that resistance where we couldn't get over on that gas. Over it. And we're looking back up a little bit higher towards the 16 point Rezone 16.4 ish zone right there, which would also be close to that 1.93 zone as well on natural gas. As of now, it's shaping a lot better than any of this drop here because we have a small four hour uptrend. And currently, it's still intact. You can see initial move, pull back, it's a higher low, higher than this low. And then we made a higher high, so higher than the prior high. So that's a four-hour uptrend confirming. And UNG, if we start pulling back here, maybe UNG will start forming an inverse head and shoulders here. So we'll see how net gas, if net gas makes a leg up, then it will make its inverse head and shoulders here versus UNG doing its inverse head and shoulders. A leg up, UNG is going to be closer to here. But we have not formed daily uptrends in a while, so once we get a pullback on the daily time frame, we'll see if they can form a daily uptrend. And then you just one initial move, and yeah, daily uptrends are pretty important. If we can ship up one up, then there's a good chance that we may head higher for a bigger move, kind of like this. Big move up, pull back on the daily chart. This high. It's a higher low, higher than the prior low. And then we broke above this prior high. So that's a daily uptrend confirming right there. And then we got some a little bit of follow through after that. Well, quite a bit, but <laughs> nobody could have guessed that, but it was a decent move. So and right now I just need one initial move. And let's see if we can get another move up. And then we'll have a lot of room to shape up that daily uptrend. But as of now, we still need to break above 1.8. So it's very early on in the stage. So this could just make a weekly lower uh, lower high and we can just come back down as well. So key level to break that is at 1.93. All right, so look at oil. Oil here is currently breaking out. And I talked about this on last Thursday where there's no red flags at all after this pullback, even though we pulled back decently here. Pretty much we broke out of this big term, long term wedge. Nice breakout, back tested. You guys know how I talk about back tests all the time and then bounce from there. That's perfect for what bulls, exactly what bulls want to see. 
resistance, now acting as support on the back test, and then we bounce from there, get more follow through. You can see after this bounce, we can have three days of rocket ship pretty much right now. About to test this 81.4 high here. And then if we break that, we're probably looking at all time highs, which would be 83. Not all time highs, that's in like 80, 53 high, we'll be looking at closer to here, this zone. And if we break that, it will probably come up to closer to this target. But as of now, we'll have to see if it can even break the bulls first. A lot of macro going on around the world for oil to be spiking, so that can definitely break the high. All right, US dollar, slight break above this pivot and lacking follow through. So, hmm, so that means an initial sign, initial red flag for bulls, just a slight one. So like just a flat red flag for bulls, this could just as easily come back up tomorrow and test it again. But um, if you break above twice, two days, and not follow through after breaking this uh, longer term weekly pivot, is a little bit of a rough flag. So we might see this pullback a little bit more, but we'll have to wait till tomorrow to see that. Um, yeah. Because if you go to the weekly chart, let me sack here. This was a weekly bounce, weekly pivot being set, higher or low. And then we just broke above the, the last pivot. That means it's a weekly uptrend confirmed. And for a weekly uptrend to confirm, having zero follow through, testing it for both two days uh, is a little bit of a red flag. So um, like I said, tomorrow we can just come up and retest it again. It's not that big of a pullback yet. Uh, so yeah, but if it starts to shape up a bigger pullback, then, then that you know initial red flag that I talk about is playing out. Just be a little bit cautious, but at the moment, nothing too huge yet. This may end up playing out as a head and shoulders, which is an uptrend into a downtrend, but like obviously we need to pull back closer to here. All right, gold. Same thing as when I said Thursday, uh, nothing to really look at technical wise because it's in just a clear sky breakout, nothing above you, nothing, no resistance. We just have to let it keep going until find this resistance and yeah right now nothing to, to see well no there's resistance when you know it tries a couple times at one area or goes sideways and then can get over that and then comes back then we know that's a new level of resistance that we'll be looking at now no signs of that yet and for bears definitely don't want to be shorting like i said from last thursday this could just keep going until it finds something to be rejected from and for bulls um, I mean, it's up to you guys. You can scale out, I'll always scale out as prices go up, scale out into strength. And we'll just hold for long. Just hold. If you're a long term investor, then just don't look at it. Uh, and just let it keep going. Obviously, it's going to pull back some time, but um, as with everything, nothing goes up in straight lines. And so far, it looks like we have a breakout of this. This finally breaking out of this big equilibrium. Almost a year, I think. August. Yeah, it's been more than a year. It's like three years, two years. <laughs> Anyways, we broke out of that. And you can see the volume when you break out of that big, nice big candle here. Although we're just underneath this and this resistance. Pretty much this one right there. I mean, we're above it, but it just, we're kind of like right on it. So if we, if we get another leg up tomorrow, we'll likely look, be looking at closer to this 26.95 level for me. Which is... And if we break that, I'm definitely looking up well, closer to here. So yeah, let's see if uh, it happens. 8% move. Or tomorrow we pull back. If we pull back, I want to see a back test of this uh, black line acting as support. We can, it's okay if we come through it, 
but we don't want to close below it. So if we come through it and then bounce and make a lower wick from there, that's a good sign. And then we end up closing above it. So I want to see a back test as a support when we come up to that. But we don't need to have we don't have to back test it. There's no rule for that. But if we do, I definitely want to see it act as support. But if we don't, can we just come down here and then close below it? That's a red flag because it took like what three years to break out of it, and then this is all we get. And now we're coming back to close it the next day. That's a red flag for us. It happens. And if we don't even just if we don't even back test it, you know. Rock it up, even better. You know, nice breakout continuation. All right, that's a guy for you guys. If you to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Guys, made it this far. We're learning anything, and I will see you guys Thursday for more updates. And uh, yeah, keep in touch for more updates. See you guys Thursday.